Welcome back, I am John P. Today we are going to be talking about Breitling and whether or not they've gone too far. Now this is not going to be any kind of critique or it's not, what I, what I mean is this video is not going to be including any kind of really criticisms about the watches per se, but more along the lines of examining a recent watch release from Breitling that was just announced today and kind of seeing where it fits in their product catalog because as we know, especially if you watch this channel um, or you see some of the watches we get at DelrayWatch.com, Breitling has been going through a bit of a, a transformation process with their, um, with you know, the leader of the company, George Kern, and they've been going digital, they've been going e-commerce, they've been going direct to consumer, much more in line with something you would see from a micro brand and a lot less of what you would see from, you know, a brand like a Rolex or Patek Philippe with their traditional authorized dealers. Now that being said, Breitling still does a lot of that, but it's becoming less and less every day and it's more direct to consumer. They want to own the customer. So, oh, by the way, make sure to check out DelrayWatch.com. A uh, quick shameless plug. The team just posted about 25 new watches, uh, pre-owned watches, but new to the site, DelrayWatch.com. And uh, we're having a lot of fun with some really cool and quirky pieces. So the Breitling watch in question just announced, just released an American Airlines branded limited edition Breitling Navitimer 43 millimeters. Now at first glance, it looks really nice. In my opinion, I, I mean, not in my opinion, I, I know for a fact that the quality is going to be on par for the rest of its offerings because, you know, they're using the same case and everything else that they make, you know, the same production facilities. I get it. So it's going to be a nice watch. It's going to be a quality watch. Let's set that aside and lay that one to rest. Breitling produces some pretty good quality watches today. Uh, but also, in my opinion, it's very aesthetically pleasing. I like the colorways, the red, white, and the blue. That's very cool. It's very Americana. And so many other co countries as well use those colors. Um, but I just think it's very attractive watch. And it looks a lot like watches they've produced in the past. But if you flip it over, on the back, it has the American Airlines logo. If you're not familiar or, or if you're in other parts of the world, American Airlines is, I believe, the largest operating commercial airline, passenger airline in the United States. I believe someone fact checked me on that and put that in the comments below. Uh, you can tell this is kind of a spur of the moment uh, reaction video, really uh, unplanned, but largest American uh, airline, go figure, it is the name of the company, but that's what they're known for. And most Americans that do travel have probably sat on the plane. So this is the watch and you can find all the specs on their website. What I want to talk about is some of the other watches they've recently released. Now, I've done previous videos kind of talking and, you know, examining the watches that they've discontinued as well. So Breitling has discontinued the Bentley lineup. Breitling Bentley watches have been a critical part of the, of, the, of the Breitling collection for probably 20 years now. That being said, those are the watches that sell in the secondhand market at the biggest discounts because they, they're almost too automotive, at least in my opinion, but that's a lot of feedback that I get from you. The collectors, when I, either we've tried to sell them or we've had them in stock, you know, if you're not really into Bentley, it's kind of like, what's the point? Because some of them even have case backs that are in the shape of a, of a steering wheel from a, a Bentley, so it's like a very tight partnership. Fast forward a couple of decades, Breitling finally nails it, knocks it out of the park, so to speak, uh, with a Breitling Bentley watch in the Chronomat B01, kind of that integrated looking bracelet with the bullet uh, design bracelet that a lot of people really enjoy and love and are glad that it came back from the dead. They come out with this beautiful green dial, heritage classic Bentley green, go figure. And then shortly thereafter, they discontinue the partnership with Breitling for Bentley in exchange for going Americana. And they replace it with the top time uh, Shelby Cobra, Corvette, and there's one other. But there's these three American classic cars, Americana, top time partnership watches. I think that they all look really nice. And you know, when they also partnered up with Deus, they have the uh, Deus, which is kind of that motorcycle clothing kind of streetwear slash brand, uh, really a lifestyle brand. And they did the outer known uh, Super Ocean 57. 
And so they've kind of developed this like Americana focus. And as I thought about that, I, what I really want to know and what I hope to really gain from this video is your opinions on this, right? And I hope that Breitling also does as well because as I thought about this, I'm tr and I don't want to be overly critical because I think that this watch does look nice and I also like the top time Americana or classic American car branded watches. It's almost like in my head I feel like Breitling might be pandering to Americans. I mean, we're talking about a Swiss brand, a classical Swiss brand that has had partnerships with traditionally international companies. I mean, different military forces, special forces from other countries, you know, Italian uh, fighter jet branding and, and so on and so forth, but they haven't done a lot with Americans. And now it's almost out of nowhere. They've doubled down on the American market outside of the watches. They've built out all the boutiques in major cities and more to come. You can read about it on websites like Watch Pro. And they've stylized the boutiques in kind of this pure, like, I, it's almost an ironic, grungy style to it. Kind of like this Brooklyn-esque motorcycle thing where you can go to the boutique and have like a salami sandwich and have a whiskey or a beer or something like that. I think they're still doing that. Uh, but at least the last time I went to a Breitling uh, boutique, that was what they had there. A little menu with these kind of like American style hors d'oeuvres with sandwiches, appetizers, snacks. And so when I see them come out with this American Airlines, I just don't get it, right? I, I don't quite see what they're doing. Are they doubling down on the American? Is it, I mean, in my opinion, it could be a pandering, but in that direction, right? They're doing the least to own programs, so you don't own the watches. Some might say that, you know, consumerism is the backbone of the American economy and, you know, people lease, they lease cars, they, you know, they rent apartments, things like that. So are, is that kind of the direction and I'm just not sure. I want to hear your take on it. I think it's more valuable that Breitling hears your take on it in the comments below what you think about this. But specifically with this American Airlines partnership, setting aside the way that it looks, I think they could have chosen much better options than choosing um, this kind of airline operator, right? They don't even produce the planes, the airplanes. They could have chosen Boeing. They could have chosen Lear. They could have chosen, you know, these companies that produce, a, you know, a quality product that fits more in line with the luxury goods, right? I mean, even looking at the, you know, the, the partnership that they had with, with Bentley, this was a luxury product. We're talking about $6,000 plus watches Breitling produces here. These are luxury goods that people kind of aspire and hope to probably one day own as some type of marker on their life of, a, of maybe something they made it, maybe they retired, maybe they reach a certain point in their career, or maybe they've just become financially well enough to be able to wear these things and enjoy them. And they partner up with just an operator of an airline that doesn't really offer any kind of luxury experience and they don't produce anything luxury. Like, yes, yeah, sure, they have first class and they have business class. And, and when you get into things like international travel and first class, it gets much better than an economy or a coach fair, but we're not talking about, you know, private jets here. We're not talking about something that's more in the vein of luxury and they don't produce the product, right? They're the people that kind of make sure everything goes and they, they have the pilots and they operate and they orchestrate, but it's not really, at least in my opinion, let me put it this way, leave in the comments below how many of you truly think that American Airlines is a luxury product, a luxury good. I, I think it's it's not the best choice when they could have, it might be okay, right? They have some premium offerings, but they could have chosen Lear or one of the other, you know, manufacturers of something like a G5 or a G6 private plane that might just be a little bit more as a solid partner than a company that probably with American Airlines, everyone has had some kind of negative experience, even if it's not for the company itself. It's just, you know, when you travel, sometimes you wait around, sometimes things happen, there's a lot of moving parts. And is that kind of the feeling that they want to be conveying to watch collectors when you're wearing the watch? No, it should be something nice. It should remind you of a nice time in your life, right? I think when you look at the watches that they made, with the American classic cars, like 
you know, let's say you were driving a, a Shelby Cobra or something like that, like maybe you enjoyed like a really nice time in that, maybe you went to prom, maybe you went to your wedding, maybe you had a really nice time in that car. Are there gonna be the people that maybe had a really horrible experience and gotten into a crash? Sure, but is overall, I think there's probably more great experiences than a company like American Airlines, which people kind of tolerate because they have to to travel, but it's not really something I think that people kind of mark in the back of their head as, wow, this was such a nice time in my, uh, in my life, American Airlines, American Airlines. I don't know. I, I think you guys probably get the picture, but what do you think? Do you think this is a great partnership? Do you see them doubling down on American brands? I think going forward, probably the next logical choice for them would be Coca-Cola. I would prefer a Coca-Cola or, you know, dare I say, Pepsi at this point, but then you start getting into, you know, Rolex territory, even though they didn't partner, they have, you know, the Pepsi bezel. But what do you guys think? Are there better choices for them? Or do you think it's refreshing? Do you like it? Um, maybe I'm the one, the odd one out that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, just doesn't have this overwhelming, nice, pleasant experience with the American Airlines brand that I want to be conveyed through the watches. Let me know what you guys think. I am genuinely curious and interested, and I hope that Breitling sees it as well, because maybe I'm wrong, maybe they're right. Who knows, but that's the beauty of watches. We all have our preferences and what we like and we don't like, and it's always cool to hear what you have to say. Also, please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com, all those new watches. And lastly, I'm sure you're curious, late in the video, but better late than never, I have on my Breguet Classique in yellow gold, um, Tiffany signed co-branded dial, very cool watch, I just can't take it off my wrist these last few days. Classic, timeless, simple, small, and unappreciated in my opinion. Guys, I gotta get back to it. Thanks, you've been chatting with John P. Ciao.